Mas al khair wa mahraban bikum. My name is Jonathan Shannon, head of the music program and an associate dean in the Division of Arts and Humanities here at New York University Abu Dhabi. On behalf of the music program and the Art Center at NYU Abu Dhabi, I'm pleased to welcome you to the fourth edition of the Manifold Festival. Manifold, a festival of contemporary music performance, presents a creative blend of new and experimental music by international musicians and accomplished practicing artists from NYU Abu Dhabi's faculty. Tonight, we feature Italian pianist Emanuele Arciuli in a program called American Music, Minimal and Beyond. Arciuli is a leading interpreter and advocate of contemporary classical music. A graduate of the Conservatory in Bari, where he is currently a professor, Arciuli has performed in some of the most famous halls in his native Italy and around the world. The program you will hear tonight highlights works by contemporary composers from the minimal motifs of Duckworth and Corleano to the textured tunes of Jevski, Archuli will be presenting an expansive and captivating program, including the world premiere of a new work composed by a member of our own faculty, Professor Matthew Quayle. I'm sure it will be extraordinary. Immediately after the performance, please join us for a conversation with the artist led by Professor Quayle and NYU AD student, Matteo Cruz. A hearty thank you to the Art Center's sustaining sponsor, GAC, as well as to their media partners, The National, Al-Itihad, Abu Dhabi World, Yalla Magazines, and Time Out Abu Dhabi. In addition, a special thanks to all the staff and crew of the music program and the Art Center who've worked so hard to bring this event to us, despite the challenges of online programming. While you're here, if you've been appreciating what the Art Center has been doing in the year since its transformation into an online performing art center, we ask you to please join as a member and keep supporting this very important work. Stay tuned for upcoming cross-cultural dialogues at the Art Center, including a collaboration between India and Sri Lankan dance companies on February 17th, and of course, more music in the works as ever. Enjoy the program. Sama'in tayyibin wa ila lilqa.
Thank you so much for joining us on the first evening of Manifold 2021. We're incredibly grateful to have you as part of our global musical community, and we don't take your presence with us tonight lightly. If you stayed with us this far, we have a treat just for you. Please welcome our guest artist for the evening, Emmanuele Archuli, in conversation with Associate Arts Professor of Music, Matthew Quayle, and senior music student, Matteo Cruz. Well, good evening, everyone, or good morning, or good afternoon for our global audience. Uh, it's so great that you could join us all. Um, my name is Matthew Quayle. I'm Associate Arts Professor of Music. I'm really thrilled uh, to be here for this Q&A session. Um, I'm joined by one of our senior music majors at NYU Abu Dhabi, Matteo Cruz, who is himself a composer and pianist. And of course, most importantly, we are joined by the artist himself, Emanuele Artuli. Uh, Emanuele, it's such a pleasure to have you with us this week. I want to tell the audience that in addition to this wonderful concert you've just presented, um, Emanuele has had a reading session with some of our composers, and he has also done a masterclass with some of our pianists. And although we would Love to have had him here in Abu Dhabi and shown him around, shown him the sights. Um, I think we really made the most of, of what was possible this week. Uh, so welcome, Emanuele. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you uh, to everybody to be here and to be there uh, in the same time. Um, unfortunately, of course, uh, due of the the COVID, we the, the pandemic, we we cannot be really all together. Uh, but um, uh, I I tried to to do my best to to be here just in in spirit, in, to be there just in spirit. Uh, thank you also for for your music that I performed tonight. Um, and uh, that, uh, and, and I remember that uh, when we met the first time was in 1998. So you were very, very young, and I was still young. <laughs> and uh, after 24 years, uh, we are friends and. Uh, we are friends in music. Absolutely. And I want to clarify um, that that was not a world premiere. Um, and that is, that is my fault for not um, communicating that update. That, is, that piece is, in fact, I realize, 20 years old now. Um, yeah. hard, hard to believe. Um, well, this was going to be one of my later questions. But since we brought it up, maybe we could start with that. I, the Round Midnight variations, uh, what was... What role did that play in your career and sort of your understanding of, of music? That was a very big project that you uh, took on. Yeah, uh, as you know, um, I'm very grateful uh, with uh, Joel Hoffman, uh, a professor at CCM, College Conservatory of Music in Cincinnati. He invited me for 10 years and every year I attended the music, the, the festival, Music X, that was a contemporary music festival. And um, I started to, to teach and perform there on 1998. And after two years, I just figured out um, how it was possible to to make it a challenge for me and for the composers, asking uh, for variations uh, on a very, very famous theme. I choose Round Midnight because I love jazz, uh, even if I'm not, of course, a jazz pianist, but I, I really love jazz. 
And uh, because uh, Round Midnight was one of my favorite pieces. Secondly, because it's a very complex piece. So it's not the, the typical piece that you can variate because it's very complex in itself, already complex. And the third uh, reason was because I wanted to understand how it's possible to, to go in, into this piece in different ways, asking uh, to very diverse and different composers ranging from Milton Babbitt to Michael Torkey that are basically the opposite. And um, of course, I was just, I, I was just walking in, in the university, the, the gardens, and uh, I thought about this project and I told, uh, I, I spoke with uh, Joe Hoffman and, uh, and the project uh, became reality, uh, real, became real thanks to him, first of all, and thanks to wonderful composers, around 20 composers. Uh, tonight, it was performed just a selection of the whole cycle. It is very, very long, big, and uh, features also a 20 minutes piece by George Crumb that is very often performed just uh, uh, not, not with the, the variation, but just the, the crown piece that now is already in the repertoire of many, many pianists. And I'm proud that this idea uh, in, uh, enriched the repertoire, the, the, the American and the piano repertoire in a very, very, I, I think also in a very important and big way. So uh, it was, it was um, very interesting. And just to, to answer to Tadeusz and uh, you know, Lindsay Bostwick uh, question, as you decide what pieces you decide to perform. Yes, uh, I, I have a lot of interaction with composers and uh, interact with composers is one of the most exciting and the most meaningful and the most important reasons to perform contemporary music for me. Um, I, I know almost all the composers, the living composers I perform. And sometimes they, they compose for me, sometimes we just work together. And it's very, very important to understand also that the relation between composer and performer is not always the same. There are some composers that are very open to pianist ideas and proposals. Other are not that open. Uh, for, for instance, George Graham is very, very open and it changed a lot of things because of my, my poor suggestions. And, um, and also I modified, slightly modified some note also in, in Matthew P's for instance, uh, because in my opinion, it works. And also Matthew in general, I don't know if he, he likely enjoyed the, the, the tonight performance, but uh, in, in general, I think that uh, um, it's, it's great to work with such an open-minded composers. Um, and in, in general, of course, it's very challenging and very exciting also because my, my uh, relation with, uh, my relation with, uh, with music is also a question of friendship. Friendship is very important and it was also historically very important. And uh, I think that I, I would like to tell that my story in music was and is and will be also a story of friendship 
because friendship is very powerful, I think, and can create a lot of connections, bring um, uh, uh, bridges and uh, a lot of things. Yeah, absolutely. Those human relationships, they, they, they drive the whole <laughs> endeavor. Um, I have one more question before I turn it over to Matteo. Um, this program, it, it spans about 30 years. But there are so many common threads between these pieces. Um, I wondered if you could speak a little bit about how you chose uh, these works and what you see as uh, common strains or things that tie them together or separate them. Because the pieces uh, are, ranges from the 70s to today. Uh, oh yeah, I um, personally I find very, very, very modern, very, very contemporary also the William Duckworth music that uh, was composed in the 70s. But thanks to, to Kyle Gunn and uh, Neely Bruce, I discovered this wonderful composer. And um, I think that, uh, of course, for me, it's not, it's not important that the music is um, co was composed in the same time, in the same period. Um, uh, sometimes you can, you can play Schumann and, uh, or Prokofiev. And so um, in this case, the, the starting point was minimal music. Uh, and post and mostly post minimal music because there are no really minimal music in this program but just post minimal music uh, like Duckward, the late the 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 the, um, the recent uh, glass because glass in, in origin was very very minimal but now he is a post minimal composer in some way and also the michael torkey and uh, the Missy Mazzoli, and also the Corigliano is in some way a minimal piece, and the Zhevsky too. Uh, but there are also Milton Babbitt, of course, is totally different thing. And, uh, and also your piece is not minimal at all. But yeah, but uh, I think that, uh, or the John Arbison, but they worked very well together in my opinion. So I, enjoyed it was the first time that I, I, I performed this recital this program uh, is just for you but I think that uh, it works yeah I, I agree it worked really really nicely Matteo would you like to ask any questions yes uh, of course thank you professor Quayle and uh, thank you Emmanuel uh, I, I was really thrilled in the concert. I, I think it was a great selection of pieces and uh, it was really engaging. And um, I, I guess um, I, I'd love to start off asking you, Emmanuel, uh, how, where, do, where do you see the future of, uh, of this type of piano repertoire going? You know, we saw one of, one of the pieces uh, that, had a, that had a recording, uh, right? Added, uh, that, that was playing with a tape. Um, do you see the future of piano music kind of like bound uh, bound to technology and uh, bound to uh, you know these really changing elements around it? Um, I, I think about a lot about the piano. You know, this instrument that's you know relatively unchanged in the last century, and music around it has changed so profoundly. And and we're trying to get more and more out of the piano. So I wonder if, if you know, where, where do you see this type of repertoire going? And particularly, do you think, uh, do you think technology is going to take a bigger role in, like, in the future uh, uh, works for piano? Oh, thanks. The, the, the technology, of course, already has a big role in, uh, in music not only in piano music, but of course also in piano music. I have no idea what will happen now because this is a very, very delicate, very strange, difficult and um, unpredictable time. It's very difficult to understand what happens now because the... Um, 
the world is like in a in a bubble now, and uh, it also in a time bubble. And when this tragedy will finish, I hope very soon. Uh, of course, the world will come back to the the very recent past, but. Uh, in the next future, some, something will change for sure. We have to metabolize what happened. And uh, I, I'm very lucky because I'm just a pianist, not a composer. I have not so big responsibility. Uh, responsibility. I, I, I have not to create, but I have to choose what I want to play. Uh, I think that you composers have a great, great responsibility now, because you have not only to, to read and to understand the present, but also to paint the future and to, to figure how will happen in the future. I think that the piano is a very unique instrument because is uh, uh, it doesn't need really the technology. You can you can be very modern, also without any technology. The piano, uh, I think, that is enough in itself. Uh, the technology uh, will be used not to be more modern or more up to date, but just to enrich the repertory of the, the, the repertoire of the sounds because um, some composer can can use as it happened also in the in the past but um, I'm also very very curious about what will happen I'm sure absolutely sure that uh, the Contemporary music will be more and more important because we will have a new audience in my, in my expectation, a new audience that also is not used to classical music. And, but they also young people, they can absolutely understand and enjoy the classical music of today. That's what I think. I, I see also two more questions in the chat. The artificial applause, to be, to be honest, I don't like so much, but I don't like so much also the, the streaming music. I think the music should be performed live because also not only because the performer needs the audience, but because the audience needs the performer and they need to be all together enjoying a performance. A recital is not something that you can do just at home alone without other people. Uh, you can listen to music in that way, but it's a totally different thing. You need to be in, in a great audience because the, the concert is for a great audience also, but you can also have just 20 people, but 20 people is different from one. The attention, the concentration, and also the taste, the, the excitement is totally different. So we must go to the live music again. And the streaming might be uh, interesting for future and uh, also unpredictable development that we, we don't know really yet, but I'm absolutely sure that it's impossible to, to have streaming instead of live music. We need 
live music and we need soon to go back to live to live music and uh, the in sun choi uh, asked how did you come to curate this list of works um, of course as i do always um one of the uh, the things that the performer has to do is to choose what he has to play, to perform. And uh, the order and uh, the program and the project. And um, every time is different. Sometimes you can play music by one composer. Sometimes you can play music from one nation. Uh, sometimes you can play music that is connected by some secret and unpredictable things. And uh, the most important thing is that the program works not just on the paper, but, but when you play and, and when, when someone listens to music. Uh, of course, uh, sometimes it's also important the interaction between the pianist and the, the, the person that invites you uh, in this case, for instance, uh, I had uh, a lot of nice talk uh, and, uh, and chat um, with Matt. And so we, we choose together the program. And uh, why did you choose the path of being a pianist? Of course, I started when I was very young, as many other people. I was three or four. And um, I already started to play piano. Um, I didn't choose really. I, I was uh, in, in this field and I, 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 don't, I don't know if I want to become a pianist uh, in the future. I, I, I don't know what life is. Uh, um, preparing for me, but um, I, yeah, so far I'm a pianist, but I, of course I'm joking, but um, I'm, I'm a pianist, but first of all, I try to be a musician that play piano. Yeah, and I wanted to ask, uh, of course, Emmanuel, you, you play everything, but you are also a real expert in contemporary American music. And I wondered how, how you came to that. Is, that. is that a direction you were headed on early, early on or uh, what, what drew you to it? And at the risk of overgeneralizing, is there something about American music that uh, you find particularly attractive or, or, or interesting? Yeah. I became, I don't know, expert, but for sure, passionate advocate of American music, starting in the very, very late 90, 90s, but uh, is a story of the, the last 20, 21 years. And uh, yes, of course, uh, American music is Sometimes it's a, it's a risk to be considered a specialist of something because, for instance, I think that there are American music that I couldn't play, I, I couldn't perform for many reasons. Also a lot of American music that I don't like. And it doesn't depend on a style because I performed Elliot Carter, and Philip Glass. Uh, it depends on many things um, that, that comes from my taste in that particular moment to my technical possibilities. There are many music that uh, it's perhaps not ideal for my fingers or for my body or for my brain. And um, some of this music I like to hear, but not to play. Um, 
In general, uh, I um, I consider American music like a, a fantastic, fabulous uh, trip. Um, a trip uh, through the American landscapes, the American cultures, and also the the very the the deep the famous deep america that is not new york neither los angeles but is new mexico is south dakota is the the midwest the south and um, and and also in my opinion american music tell a lot of stories uh, that uh, attract me and excite me a lot. Um, the William Duckworth music, for instance, I think that William Duckworth is a great composer, but is mostly uh, un unknown. Uh, I don't think that people know who he was. Uh, in Europe, he is totally unknown. And uh, his music is very lively is very fresh is very interesting rhythmically very interesting and uh, and beautiful and uh, it's incredible that uh, a lot of pianists follow to play always the same 70 or 80 pieces but we have million million of beautiful music and uh, of course i don't i don't want to play music that other pianists don't play I, I don't care. I can play also very famous music, but I just want to play music that I like and that uh, allow me to, to tell stories. So, uh, and, and I found that American music was the ideal field for me. I don't know why, but part of myself is perhaps American. I don't know, but I, I really feel a strong, strong feeling with the with American music, even if I don't like a lot of things about America, but I like American music. Great, great answer. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. Matteo, would you like to take, take this um, slide? I was, it was, uh, it was a, a, lot, a lot to uh, wrap my hand around them and it was uh, really, really nice to hear uh, you talk about the connection that there has to be between the audience, the pianist, the composer, you know, this kind of like a much more widely encompassing form of understanding of understanding music. And uh, I, I guess I'd want to ask, uh, touching, uh, touching on, on the last things that you mentioned, because um, I, I agree, you know, you see, you see the same repertoire uh, being played over and over again uh, in um, just about everywhere. And um, you know, what what do you think personally that um, that has to be that can be done or has to be done to start having that kind of shift of focus? You know, to like look into um, look to start to appreciate more that you know the the. The more contemporary and the more uh, even the more local work right you know at least in your experience um what, what have you seen that you know that works to like to like promote uh this other music this other great music you know this other million pieces around uh but that somehow kind of get lost in you know these uh, other classical uh classic pieces that just keep being played over and over again Oh, if I knew it, of course, I would try to change minds and, and audiences and the people. I don't know. I have no idea. And also, I don't think that we have to support and help the audience too much. I think that the audience uh, should go to the repertoire that they want and freely uh, without uh, any any condition, I think that perhaps when the artistic directors will understand 
the enormous potential of the new music. Um, they, and the, that is so stupid to, um, to cancel the music of today because uh, music of today is the, the best condition for the audience to understand that classical music is not just a deaf language, but is a language that is developing every day. And uh, the music I played tonight is part of a process that started with Monteverdi and Bach and Mozart. And of course, uh, the only difference is that now music is composed not only in Europe and eventually in America, but also in Africa, in Asia, in Australia, in New Zealand, in, uh, in South America. And uh, there are a lot of different cultures is really the world, the entire world is like a positive pandemic. But uh, unfortunately, we try to, to, uh, to fight against the, the negative pandemic, but we should try to develop the positive pandemic. So the, the music that uh, is composed every day all over the world and that sound very beautiful, very rich, very interesting and, and very challenging for the, the intelligence, the sensitivity and of everybody. And uh, I think that the audience is already ready to the new music, but it's very important that the organizer, the, the artistic directors, they really change their mind and uh, we will do our best that in, in this way. Yeah, that, that was that was a great a great answer. Thank, thank you very much, Emmanuel. Yeah, gr great answer. Um, well, I think we're, we're out of time. Uh, I want to thank the Arts Center and the NYU AD Music Program and the Division of Arts and Humanities, um, all the faculty, staff, students who've helped uh, with this residency and this concert. And Emanuele, it was such a pleasure uh, to be with you this week to, to hear this amazing recital. Um, and I hope we'll be in touch again soon. But thank, sure. you. thank you so much. For sure. Thank you to all of you. Thank you really from my heart. And good luck. And see you soon. Good luck. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you, everyone. Ciao.